Hey guys, so I tend to request books from publishers in batches and then they just kind of trickle in whenever the publisher can get them to me and so I thought I would go ahead and show you some of those right now. A collection of them that I've mostly gotten in uh, November and uh, the ones that I've gotten so far through December and I'll, I'll check back with you like in a month to uh, update on what I've gotten but this is the stuff that I, I have right now. Before I get into the bulk of these, I actually do have one here that I got like right at the end of October, but never got a chance to uh, show and wasn't sure if I wanted to keep it, wasn't sure if I was ever going to read it because I just at first it didn't sound exactly like something I would be into, but I thought I would give it a shot and uh, we'll see how it goes. It is Certain Dark Things by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. So I saw a really great review for this on Thomas's channel, uh, SFF180. And he did, he was doing like a week of reviews for uh, Halloween, like the week leading up to Halloween, and it was a really good review and actually made me really interested in reading it. So I decided to actually keep it and actually try to give it a shot. I'm not sure exactly when that'll happen. I think most of these that I'm showing you right now will be read right at the beginning of January. So I'm going to try to get through all of these in January. I think I have a couple more that are coming out in January also, besides these ones I'm showing you right now that just haven't come yet. So uh, we'll see what I can get to. But I will be trying to give this a shot. It's it's a pretty short little thing, so hopefully be giving this a shot uh, as soon as I can. So apparently in this, Mexico City is an oasis in a sea of vampires. So I first saw vampires and was like, eh, this doesn't really look like something for me. Like the cover just didn't look like it was something for me, but it does actually sound interesting the more you look into it. Uh, it says, Domingo, a lonely garbage collecting street kid, is busy ecking out a life when a jaded vampire on the run swoops into his life. Attil, the descendant of Aztec blood drinkers, must feast on the young to survive, and Domingo looks especially tasty. Smart, beautiful, and dangerous, Attil needs to escape South America, far from the rival narco-vampire clan pursuing her. Her plan doesn't include developing any real attachment to Domingo. The only living creature she loves is her trusty Doberman. Little by little, Adol finds herself warming up to the scrappy young man and his effervescent charm. And then there's Anna, a cop who suddenly finds herself following a trail of corpses and winds up smack in the middle of vampire gang rivalries. Vampires, humans, cops, and gangsters collide in the dark streets of Mexico City. So that does actually sound interesting. It's a it's like a mystery thriller kind of thing with vampires, and I'm actually kind of looking forward to it now. So. We'll see how that goes. And then the next one uh, that is, is already out, actually, I got this well, right at the end of November. I didn't realize it was coming out, and I'm really glad that I was able to get the publisher to send it to me. And it is Extreme Makeover by Dan Wells. This is, I've never read any Dan, Dan Wells before. I actually have several of his books on hold on Overdrive for me right now. Uh, I have been listening to the Writing Excuses podcast a lot, and he's on that. And I really want to listen to I Am a Serial Killer and uh, his uh, other series, Partials. So I'm going to give those a shot and see how I feel about them. But I, I'm, not, I'm not sure when I'm going to get to those. But I am definitely going to be getting to this as soon as I possibly can. This sounds like so much fun. This is about a health and beauty company that puts out a new product that seems to be turning people into someone else. And uh, it's really, it sounds great. Uh, it sounds like it's humorous. It sounds like it'll be a lot of fun. And so I'm going to give it a shot. I'm really looking forward to getting into some of Dan Moe's work. And I also just I love that cover. That's kind of awesome, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm going, to, I'm going to give this a shot as soon as I possibly can. And of course, I had to get Brandon Sanderson's Arcanum Unbounded, The Cosmere Collection. This is a short story collection, or this is some novellas in it as well. Uh, lots of his short stories are just novella length in general. Anyway, it's short in Brandon Sanderson terms. So I've read actually most of the things that are in this already. Uh, I went on a kind of Brandon Sanderson binge for a while. And I mean, I, I both loved that, but also wish I kind of had it because I like I would have loved to still experience some of the new things. But luckily there is a new story in this called Edge Dancer. It is a Stormlight Archive uh, novella. So I'm definitely going to be giving that uh, a read through. And I might actually read through some of the other short works in this as well, uh, like uh, Shadows for Silence in the Force of Hell and uh, Six of the Dust. Those are, I love those stories very, very much. And maybe I'll read Emperor's Soul again too, because I've only read it once and it is definitely a favorite of uh, his work in general. So I'm going to be giving mostly the uh, uh, different, because yeah, every, every single one of the uh, stories in this has like a little introduction by in like an in-universe character in the Cosmere, kind of putting this collection together. 
So I'm going to go read through and kind of see uh, what that person says about all the different stories that are throughout this. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. And the book itself is just gorgeous. Like, I haven't seen that many people uh, kind of show it off. I like The UK edition is also really beautiful, but the American edition, I actually do really love this cover. Uh, this beautiful, gorgeous, like, dark blue. And then on the inside of this is an even darker, like, navy blue. But it has this great uh, Cosmere symbol on it. I don't know if you can see that all that well, but it's really cool. And I just really like the way this is made in general. And it has like these beautiful little illustrations in it. Uh, this like kind of illustration of the Cosmere uh, and where all the different planets within the Cosmere are. And I think that's just beautiful. And I've been, I've actually been flipping through this quite a bit. And I've, like I said, I might read some of those of my favorite stories in this and uh, we'll see what I decide to do. I think there's at least one other story besides the Edge Dancer story that I haven't read. I think uh, I haven't read one of the Elantris related stories, but uh, we'll see what I can get to. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be reading it all the way straight through, and maybe I'll just get really into it and do that, but uh, I am definitely happy to have this on my shelf and have it in my very large collection of Brandon Sanderson stuff. So and then I also have this book. This is uh, Last Year by Robert Charles Wilson. This is an author I've never read before, but he is very well known, uh, and he's uh, won the Hugo before. And I this actually came out right at the beginning of December, and I really wish I could have gotten to it before it came out, but I just never had the chance to. So I'm definitely going to be reading this at the beginning of January and trying to get a review out of it as soon as possible. I'm going to be trying to review almost everything that you see in this. This one, it like has this interesting little comparison there. I'll just I can just I can just read it to you, or at least read part of it to you on this little sell sheet. It kind of mentions that it has some similar themes to like Westworld and you can definitely tell that when you read about what it's about. Uh, so two events made September 1st a memorable, memorable day for Jesse Cullum. First he lost a pair of Oakley sunglasses. Second he saved the life of President Ulysses S. Grant. It's the near future and the technology exists to open doorways into the past. But not our past, not exactly. Each past is effectively an alternate world, identical to ours but only up to the date on which we access it and a given past can only be reached once. After a passageway is opened, it's the only road to that particular past. Once closed, it can't be reopened. So this is uh, takes place in 19th century Ohio. It's been in operation for most of a decade, but it's no secret on either side of time, this small city has grown up around to entertain visitors from our time, and many locals earn a good living catering to them. So it sounds really cool. I'm actually really excited for this one. This is probably one of the most my most anticipated ones that I've gotten in this hall in particular. And so I'm going to be reading that uh, as soon as I can. You'll definitely hear me talk about that more in the very near future. And so then the next one is another uh, science fiction book. It is Fortress at the End of Time by Joe McDermott. This book comes out right in the middle of January, January 17th. It's a short little thing. And so I'm going to hope to read this um, right at the beginning of January and uh, give you a little review on it. And we'll see how that goes. But I saw this and was uh, definitely really interested and uh, was glad Tor was able to send it to me. And so it's about uh, this guy named Captain Ronaldo Aldo. He's committed a, an unforgivable crime. He will ask for forgiveness all the same, from you, from God, even from himself. Connected by Ansible, humanity has spread across galaxies and fought a war against an enemy that remains a mystery. At the edge of human space sits the Citadel, a relic of the war and a listening station for the enemy's return. For a young ensign Aldo, fresh from the academy and newly cloned across the Ansible line, it's a prison from which he may never escape. Deplorable work conditions and deafening silence from the blackness of space have left morale on the station low and tensions high. Aldo's only hope of transcending his station and cloning a piece of his soul somewhere new is both his triumph and his terrible crime. So, I'm really looking forward to this. I love this cover. The cover is what uh, drew me to it at first, honestly. Uh, so, science fiction, we're looking forward to it. It's nice short science fiction, so uh, hopefully I like it. And you'll see a review of that, definitely. And then I also have uh, this, which is... It kind of sounds a little bit similar. It also involves clones in space. Six Wakes by Mer Lafferty. This is from Orbit. And this is another very really highly anticipated book for me. I'm really looking forward to giving this a shot. I really am interested in reading some Mer Lafferty. I've seen her name crop up more and more over the past couple months, uh, which has been interesting. So I'm going to also do a review of this. This comes out right at the end of January. And uh, let's see. In the depths of space, it's pretty normal to wake up in a cloning vat. The streaks of blood, however, not so normal. Maria Arena has been cloned before. Usually, when she awakens, has a new clone. Her first memory is of how she died. This time, she has no idea. Her memories are incomplete. And Maria isn't the only one to have died recently. So, another one where actually the cover kind of drew me in at first, and then the learning more about the author. And I've never read anything by her before. 
uh, like I said. So I'm going to give this a shot and uh, do a review of it as well. And mostly next year is going to be a huge year for me when it comes to reading science fiction. So the more new science fiction I can get, the better in my opinion. So and then the next book is another tour book uh, that was sent to me right when uh, the Fortress at the End of Time was sent to me, and it is Cold Council by Chris Sharp. This comes out near the end of February, February 21st, and this, <laughs> this is, I kind of got this on a whim, and I just want to see what I feel about it, and I'll definitely let you know, and I'll give you a review of it, but uh, it, it sounds like it has some typical fantasy tropes in it, uh, typical like Neanderthalish race uh, tropes that I've, I feel like I've seen before, but uh, I'm definitely still really intrigued by it. So it is uh, Sled of the Blood Claw Clan, bringer of troubles was born at the heart of the worst storm the mountain had ever seen. Sled's father, chief of the clan, was changed by his son's presence. For the time since the age of the giants, he rallied the remaining trolls under one banner and marched to war, taking back the mountain from goblin clans. However, the long-lived elves remember the brutal wars of the last age and did not welcome the return of these lesser giants to martial power. 20,000 elves marched on the mountain intent on genocide. They eradicated the entire troll species, save two. Aunt Agnes, an old witch from the Iron Wood, carried Slud away before the elves could find them. Their existence remained hidden for decades, and in that time, Agnes molded Slud to become her instrument of revenge. For cold is the Council of Women. So, that sounds fun. I'm guessing this is Slud on the front here. So, Slud and his uh, aunt were the only ones to escape, and uh, he gets to exact revenge on the elves that did it to him. So, sounds fun. Uh, so, it, it kind of brings in uh, typical fantasy races and stuff. And uh, hopefully we'll give it an, an interesting new twist. No, uh, we'll see how that goes. So and the last one in this haul in particular, the last one that I just got very recently, and I'm expecting some more this week. I actually have a few that I think will come this week, but I just didn't want to wait too much longer to film this one. So uh, you'll get more very shortly. But it is Book Burners by Max. Well, it's created by Max Gladstone. So what this is, is I don't, this is something that I didn't know existed until I decided to request this and then I got it in the mail and then, well, I first got it because it said Max Gladstone's name on it. I've never read anything by Max Gladstone, but I have his books and I plan on reading all of his stuff next year. So I mostly got it because, oh, it was like a new thing coming out and it looked interesting. The summary sounded interesting, but I wasn't sure exactly what it was. And so when I got it, I did a li little bit more research into it. And apparently this thing called Serial Box, it's, you can see it on the spine right there, or maybe you can't, it's kind of a small little thing, but uh, Serial Box is a website, SerialBox.com, where they release serials, serial stories, so, but in this case, it's uh, something created by Max Gladstone, but all these different authors write within his little story. So it is Margaret Dunlap Mer Lafferty, again we see her name, and Brian Francis Slattery, so... They, uh, they this is set up in episodes, so this is actually season one, what they're calling season one. I think season two is going on on SerialBox.com right now of Book Burners. Series, this is season one, and each chapter in this is called an episode, and each episode is written by a different author within the story. So I'm hoping to read through this. It's kind of kind of big, and we will see when I can get through it. And I think it comes out January 17th, 2017, so uh, hopefully early on in January I'll be able to give it a shot and post a review of it. So. This is uh, Sal Brooks, police detective and long-suffering big sister, is used to getting her brother Perry out of tough spots, but this is the first time he's been possessed by a demon. Magic is real. It lurks in ancient books, waiting for the evil or unwary to release it into the world, and Perry's adventure and rare book collecting has taken a demonic turn for the worst. To save him, Sal joins a secret Vatican anti-magic squad, Team 3 of the Societas Librarum Occultorum, dedicated to saving people from the monsters beyond our world and the humans who try to release those monsters from the books in which they're bound. Team 3's enemies call them the Book Burners, and they don't like that name. So, <laughs> sounds interesting. It's about ancient books that hold monsters and magic, so it uh, should be fun. And the people that take care of those monsters and magic and books. So, I'm looking forward to that. I think that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys have any interest in any of these specifically over others, I would love to hear about that. Maybe I can kind of prioritize them or put them in a certain order of when I'm going to go ahead and review them. But as for now, I'm mostly just going to read them and review them in the order that they were published, so or that they're going to be published. So thank you guys so much for watching. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of these if you have any, or specifically any of the authors. If you've read any of the authors' other works, I would love to hear about your opinion on them. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you later with more.